What's going on, Pack? Here with Aqua today, and I'm bringing you guys a video. This one's actually going to be um, a pretty long one. I'm actually pretty much just going to make this a Ultimate Town Hall 8 hogging guide. Because I've made videos before. Um, actually, I think I only posted one on hogging. And it, it really... It, it didn't cover every aspect that I would like to show in hogging. And... I feel like a lot of people aren't grasping the concept of how the pathier hogs just from that video. So I kind of want to do one on a couple of different pathing styles. Even though I only have an attack on one pathing style, I'm I'm, I'm kind of just going to make this into a playlist on the channel. So anybody basically who wants to learn how the hog, you can go into this playlist and you can you can grab out of that and watch a couple of videos and see and learn when when to apply different pathing styles for hogging. So that's my goal as well as just um, pointing out like a, other other key things that you can do to be efficient with your troops. Okay, and uh, I've got something new to show you guys too. Finally figured something out, so that's going to be cool. But we're just going to hop right into it. And uh, basically what I did here, oh, I need to go back. Basically what I did here is I, I wrote up a, a, a list on my computer. It's kind of just on a little notepad of the steps I take when going through a base and how I approach um, my whole attack. So we're going to go back to last war where I did an attack on 32. And there were a couple of things. Well, there was at least one thing I did wrong in this raid, so I'm going to have to point that out. But other than that, I'm going to show you how I went about it. Okay, we're going to go to the scout. If it'll let me press the button. Jeez, this, this, this tablet's way too laggy. I need a new one. I need an iPad. I need something. All right. So this was my target. And we're going to start on this list here. So number one is identifying the best method of pathing for your hogs. You've already decided you're going to hog the base. Um, and the best me method for um, pathing. So typically, um, I like to implement using um, a one-finger drop to where you can get your hogs to all travel in one group on bases where there is a broken ring of defenses, meaning that they don't all connect, and you can kind of easily pat your hogs around one way, around one way, or um, you can strategically take out a couple of buildings to um, manipulate the pathing of your hogs so you can get them around a certain way. Um, typically, for this style of pathing, you don't want there to be any double giant bomb spots. And in this base, and here's where I get to show you guys the cool new thing that I found. Come on. Found a drawing app. Sweet, huh? So in this base, there actually are two spots for double giant bombs. And one is here. Oh, wow. This is laggy. And the other one is here. And they'd have to be going sideways. So those, these are the only two spots for double giant bombs. Um, everything else is a 3x3 three three or less. And I honestly just pretty much concluded that there are no double giant bombs in this base. Because of the way that there are other blank spaces in this base, I figured there was already two giant bombs um, that were, were already out of this area. So there's no way there could be a double giant bomb. So I kind of just um, ignored that. Um, anyway... So yeah, I decided to use the one-finger drop. Bases that you, you might use a two-finger drop on are bases that are um, extremely symmetrical. They are exactly the same on both sides, and you can basically, yeah, you can, you can drop your hogs at the same time with a two-finger drop, and they're going to travel around the base at the same exact way. You can use two heels near the middle or wherever um, defenses are really compacted at, and then you can use one at the end that they will all meet up, and that heel and stand in. And that's, that's typically when I use that two-finger drop. Um, I, I implement that with a go-ho a lot when you have to use a golem. Um, basically, the pre-trigger, a double giant bomb, um, I'll use that two-finger drop. But today, we're just going to look at a one-finger drop. Um, after that, it um, if there is a base that you know has a double giant bomb set, and it's a good double giant bomb set, or there's more than one possible double giant bomb set that you really can't avoid, um, your only other option is really, really if you can't go ho it and you can't get to it with a golem you have to expend too many troops to get to that spot with a golem the best way to go about it is to surgical hog it 
Um, but we're not going to look at that today. We're just going to look at the one finger drop. Okay. So that's the first step is identifying the method of pathing. So in this base, um, I'm deciding that I'm going to do one finger drop because there is a spot in this base where you can eliminate a defense or two to manipulate manipulate your pathing so that they can go a certain way. Um, and honestly, that's what I look for when I first start this raid. I'm looking around here to see what I can eliminate. Um, to get my pathing right. Like if I eliminated this cannon in this archer tower, it's not really helping me because there could be Teslas in this compartment above there and they might go up and if there's not, they will split. Some might go to the core. So you really have to look for a spot. And this one, I almost didn't find it. And what I actually ended up doing was taking out this cannon and this archer tower. Um, and I actually didn't know if I was going to take out this mortar or not, but I had two separate plans for pathing my hogs dependent on if that mortar went down or not. And that mortar did not end up going down. since So, so since it didn't end up going down, I decided to path all my hogs to that mortar and then to this air sweeper and to this air defense. So just to draw in here real quick, I take these two defenses out. And that leaves the mortar, okay? And the next closest air defense is that air sweeper. But, say I start dropping my hogs, and this is one thing you guys really have to realize. When, when you drop them that mortar, to make it go to that air sweeper, you have to drop them from about back here. At this angle. So they come on that edge of the mortar. Otherwise, if you drop them, like, up here, they might go to the top of that mortar and a lot are going to split to the whiz tower and some are going to split to the air sweeper and that's that's no good at all you, you really need to watch that um another thing is that um with, with that when you path them like this um that mortar is going to go down and there's still going to be hogs like back here on this line and those hogs are going to go to the next closest defense. So you want them to be back here, so that way they're going to travel up this way towards these defenses and not towards that whiz tower. So that's pretty much my plan. Um, and that, that that gets us to the next part. So that's that's all identifying the pathing, but this is part of the second part is a CC lure. Okay, so for the CC lure, I see a lot of people um, using either insufficient troops or giants sometimes to lure the clan castle. And I think some people might just look at this base and say, oh, well, um, that range does go a little out. I could just drop a giant back here behind this gold mine and it'll bang on that wall and get to that cannon and I'll get the lure with one or two giants. Well, you can do that, but there's you, you really want to be effective with your lure. So you'll see what I do is I'll take out this cannon and this archer tower. Instead of just bringing two hogs, I'm going to bring four. Generally, when you do this, though, you don't want to do it by the um, enemy Barbarian King because that Barbarian King can take out your hogs really fast. He's going to lock onto them, and you might not even get one, or you're definitely not going to get the second defense down, and that can totally screw your pathing, and then the whole entire raid is screwed. You're going to have to expend more troops to get that second building down, and it usually goes bad. So... Um, what I end up doing is I implement my king and this is a big thing is I see people wasting their barbarian kings on their hog raids you always want to use your barbarian king to A either do a king swap which is where you drop your barbarian king in range of theirs or you drop him to tank for defenses before you drop your hogs so this actually ends up working out perfect because I can drop my bar my Barbarian King back here by this gold mine. He locks onto that king. Not only does he do that, but he tanks for this cannon and this archer tower. So that way, while, while those defenses are distracted by my king, I can send four hogs in here. They'll take out this cannon. They'll take out this archer tower. And they almost even take out this mortar. Um, you can see there's no other point defense in range of that. There's nothing else around here that can touch the hogs. The, the Wiz Tower is the only thing that really starts touching them, and then the Dragon and the CC takes it out. So that is a really efficient use for your troops. Instead of just using two Giants to lure out of this and not 
killing um, and not taking out any defenses, I'm using uh, my king and four hogs. And for about 10 extra troop space on my king, I'm taking out the enemy king. I'm taking out two defensive buildings. And I'm setting my, 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 my pathing up for the entire raid. And that's that's a huge value. That's things that you really have to look for. So th this this was a really efficient lure. Um, yeah, um, another point on that, not specific to this base, but look for things like where archer towers aren't in range of, like, cannons. Like, say, this cannon was in range of this CC, but this air defense wasn't here. Drop loons on the cannon, and there aren't out archer towers around. You can drop You can drop loons on it to destroy it instead of having to use like five hogs that'll destroy a cannon if there's no archer towers around just drop loons on the cannon nothing else can hit it you're getting more and you're destroying defenses um say that there's no archer towers as well and you don't need to kill or i always say kill defenses you don't need to take out any defenses but there's cannons you could send in a minion if the cannon is exposed and you can get the cc lure with two troop space which is great always great okay Sorry if I'm dragging on, guys, but I'm really trying to, like, make points about this. And I don't have too many replays to show and, like, il illustrate all of this just yet. And that'll be added later, but yeah. Okay, so we have the CC lure. So that's what I do there. Um, I ended up luring that, take out those TV defenses. And the next part is the CC anchor and the CC kill. So I anchor the clan castle back here. And you always want to anchor... The clan castle and pull the clan castle troops behind where you're going to deploy your hogs. That way, after you kill the CC and whatever's left over after you kill the CC stays alive because your hogs go ahead of them and they tank for them. You always, always, always want to do that. Um, it's just efficient. You're saving, you're saving your firepower. You're saving cleanup troops is essentially what you're doing. You're you're using your kill squad as cleanup troops too. So you can in this base. This has a boater side in the corner. Just put an archer back there. Um, to kill the CC, I used witches. If you guys have a level four clan castle, which means you can hold twenty five, you have twenty five housing space. I would recommend to you to always take witches into your raid, into your hog raid. Witches are great because they can take out any enemy CC with ease. Um, as well as that, they usually always stay alive if you do it right, and they are a great cleanup troop, and the, the skeletons kind of act as their own tank as well, even if they get out of range of, like, if the hogs aren't defending them anymore, the, the skeletons kind of tank for the wizards behind it and and, and, the, and the witches. It's it just, it, it's a win. Um, the only CC you're going to have trouble taking out is a clan castle, an enemy clan castle with two witches in it, and that's still not hard. It just takes some time sometimes if you don't back it up with enough wizards that... That clan castle, you might have to back up with like three wizards. But usually I just drop, after I anchor, I drop three barbarians. And then I drop my CC full of witches. And then after the skeletons start locking on, the barbarians lock on to all their enemy troops, I drop two wizards behind it. And that will take out any CC. Please try it. Once you use it, you'll you'll be so happy with it. Because you almost you can drop those, those three barbs, the witches, and the, and the two wiz. And you don't even have to worry about it. Because it, it works it it just it works so well so you guys please always take witches if you can i used to be the guy that take I, I took max hogs all the time but really it's not worth it to have that 10 extra damage per second on the hogs as it is to have these witches as cleanup troops it, it just it really works out really good um in this raid actually when i show the replay you'll see that i really screwed up after i anchored i dropped my witches first and then I dropped my barbarians. And even though my barbarians got out in front of my witches, the CC troops still lock on to the first troop that was dropped. And they lock on to the first witch that comes out of Clan Castle and she dies. Which sucks because then I have to end up expending like three or four more wizards than I wanted to. But it still ended up working out. Luckily for me. Okay. I think that's it for that point. So yeah. So far we've got... Your first step is identifying your pathing, doing your CC lure, your CC anchor, and your CC kill. The next is obviously your hog deployment. Um, the only thing I can really say about this, obviously it's already predetermined. We know where we're going to go. I have the archer tower and the cannon taken out, so I'm going to go with this mortar, and then they're going to go with this air sweeper to this air defense, and etc. Um, the only thing you have to watch for is when you have bases that don't have spots for double giant bombs in the base, or just a single giant bomb period, you might want to send a test hog 
um, to your first defense before you send your whole group. Um, and you'll see me do this on that raid. I just tap once just to make sure there's not like a giant bomb out here. Because say I just I held my finger out here, I did my drop, and there is a giant bomb. It hits, it hits all my hogs. I have to heal them immediately. And that totally screws up the, the planning of my other two heals. And most people panic, and it, it, it totally screws up your raid. It, it can end up going bad. So always worth it to send a test hog. Um, that's pretty much it. After that, um, it's your heal placement, and that's predetermined. Um, I know that I'm going this way. You want to heal in places where there are a lot of defenses, especially point defense. You want to heal in the areas where your hogs are being targeted by a lot of point defense, and you want to do it over the spaces where there's bombs, obviously. So, there's a space for a bomb between this air sweeper and this clan castle. So, I heal. And this heal was actually a little bit high. Um, you'll see in the replay that the heal was actually a little bit high. Um, I could have had the heal lower. But, I would have wanted the heal about right here. And that will cover all five of those defenses in there, including the air defense. But mine went a little bit too high. You want to lead your hogs. Because they're going to run over that bomb, but they're going immediately to that mortar right after. So you want to lead your hogs. So that was the first heal. After that, I think my second heal was right about here. And this one was perfect. Because it ended covering for seven defenses. The cannon, the archer tower, the mortar in the middle, the whiz tower... And two Teslas that are in there. It ended up covering for almost at, like everything. You want to place your heels to where it, it, the edges where your hogs are standing in the heels while they're touching other defenses. Don't panic and see a giant bomb and click on it with your heel. Because essentially you're wasting half your heel. Like say I, I saw a giant bomb come up here and I click and the middle of that heel is there. Your hogs are already at this mortar by the time you see that, and half the heal is behind it. You're wasting that, so don't do that. So, yeah. Anyway, I think that's about where my heals are. One. I know I draw really good circles, guys. Um, two. And the last one's just somewhere up in here because it's really not even needed. So I think those are my three heals. Um, you, the, yeah, that's. I don't think I can make more of a point on that. Just make sure... That you have good heal placement. I see people place those wrong or incorrectly a lot of times, and they're just not used to their full efficiency. Um, that's pretty much it. Besides cleanup and your cleanup troops. Once you get good at hogging, oh no, I wanted to turn that off. Once you get good at hogging, you can drop your cleanup troops while your hogs are like between the heels of your hogs. Like say, I already picked my hogs. That I already deployed my hogs and I put my first heal down. You can switch your wizards and in this one I would want to have three to put on the builder's hut and the top, on the bottom, and on the side here. That's pretty much what I would want. Um, I'm gonna try to pull this menu down because it's making me draw all over the place now and I can't I can't exit out of it. There we go. Yeah, sometimes it's a little bit annoying. Okay. Um and that's pretty much it. Um, I guess I'm just going to hit this replay. And sorry if I, that was really long, guys. I hope it wasn't too boring. Like I said, <laughs> um, I'm going to try to put more videos into this playlist so you guys have a full set to look through and you have you, you, you can pretty much decide what you're going to do with the base and how you're going to use your, your kill squad and your barbarian king and different types of pathing. You, you get my gist. Okay, so I'm going to play this here. And you'll see, I dropped that Barb King, look. The, the cannon and the archer tower are, log, are locked onto the king, and I sent my four hogs there. I think I actually sent five on accident, I really didn't need to. But nothing's hitting those hogs, look at the health. Nothing's hitting them. Very good use. So, see that mortar doesn't go down. And the only thing that sucks about this is... <laughs> After I raged my king, there wasn't a lot to shoot him. There wasn't a lot of point defense around to shoot him, so those barbs ended up lasting forever. And you saw that 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 archer that I put back on the builder's hut already took out the archer or took out the builder's hut. So yeah, here you're gonna see I dropped my witches first on accident, even though 
I dropped those barbs in front of them, they still took out that first witch. Super annoying. I was only planning on using two whiz to kill that dragon, and it totally went it went downhill. Ended up having to use about four more whiz than I wanted to, but it still worked out because typically on on a one finger drops like this, you're gonna have a lot of hogs left over if you put your heels right. <laughs> So no big deal. See you see that test hog right there? I put that one test hog just to make sure that they were uh, on that mortar. And now you see what I was talking about when that defense goes down. Because when that goes down, there's a bunch of hogs that are still in the back. They're not all on that mortar. And you want to make sure that they're going to the next closest defense. Really important on the angle you take coming into that. See how only like two or three of them went up toward that whiz tower. That's good. <laughs> Pretty decent first heal. I'm gonna pause on the second heal after they get into that. All right, so they just took that first defense down, but look how much that that heal is covering. They took that one archer tower down. There's the cannon on the right. And the heel covers that, so that's two. Covers the mortar, three. Covers both, te both Teslas, four and five. And the Wiz Tower, six. Almost um, the Archer Tower on top. Actually, it might be seven. And the air defense in, in the core on the left. So that's actually eight defenses. Um, the only thing is I dropped it a little bit early, so um, it ends up running out. But if I would have waited on that, I mean, it would have tanked, it, it tanked for that whole area. You can see I'm starting to drop cleanup was around, but yeah. Last heal spell there. I mean that's that's wrecked. Bunch of hogs left over. I mean that's just that's it. Um Yeah, that's pretty much it for this one guys. I hope that I made some sense. I hope that you guys got something out of this. I'm sorry that I didn't have more attacks to show, um, to actually demonstrate a lot of the things that I was talking about. But I promise you, there's going to be more to come, and I'll illustrate it a lot better in the future. All right, well, that one's pretty much going to wrap it up. I'll see you guys back over at Wolfpack.